wonder who the interlovers are. Murph and Mac, we do the morning show on KBR. We just ran up here from the stage, so forgive us. Pauly, I'm Murph. He's Pauly, I'm Murph. I think you guys know who these guys are. Just for historical purposes, we'll introduce pitcher Tim Lincecum. Wilson now, he goes, 
I effing love that guy. <laughs> so I think, uh, you know, everyone loves Wheeze. Put on a great show watching it was just so much fun. And, uh, uh, you know, and, you know, with, with him doing what he does and, and off the field, and he's just he's just a, as good off on the field. There's no one else we want closing out the games. And, and uh, you know, he's just a fun, fun guy. And watching him on that show was, was great. Very good stuff. So, okay, our interns are out there with microphones. Paulie, do you have one near you? Yeah, we're going to start over here, guys. So if you have a question, yeah, raise your hand. If you have a question, right here, guys. Get it right here. Uh, Get why, it why are you doing the SNL? But the question was, question is, are you going to do Saturday Night Live? I don't think they have a spot for me. I would love to do it, and the only reason why I would do it is because of you guys. Uh, any, anytime I do anything crazy on TV, it's just to let you guys in on, on uh, any personality that us ballplayers have, you know. I try to show that we're not just robots, wake up, perform. You know, we, uh, we appreciate what you do and come out to the field, so it's our little give back to be a little quirky or do something fun. Okay, how many microphones do we have out there, by the way? Just one, we need to get one over here and one over here. He's got one right here, we've got two. Oh, Peter, go out and yeah. work the room, work the room. Uh, we, we have another question home. on this side. This young lad to the right here, your question is to who? Uh, to everyone. Everyone? You guys are going to have uh, more than 92 wins or less than 92 wins? Okay, come on. Uh, I think with the pitching staff that we have, the same guys that we brought back, I don't see why not. We can't, you know, we're close to 100 games, you know. So. Obviously, I like to say it's, you know, one pitch at a time and one game at a time, and I think that's how we're going to get there. Hey, Freddie, uh, you're on the spot now. You have to foretell the future. Uh, I'll take the same amount of wins as long as we get back to the World Series. Uh, how many wins it takes? You know, unfortunately for us, it only took us to win 92 games, but uh, however many it takes next year, I'm sure we'll be up for it. Uh, Brian, you want to do the predicting game here? Well, it took us 161 games to wake up and nail it down the last one, so <laughs> everything, everything's just pre preliminary to the playoffs. So final game of the year, you know. We're going to win the final game of the year, and we're going to go to the playoffs. That's what's happening. Okay. 125 wins. <laughs> this young lass here, you can, you can go ahead and say your name and your hometown if you want. My name is Julianne. I'm from Houston, California. Uh, my question's for Brian. First of all, I love you. <laughs> but my question is, I want to know what's the closer what goes on in your head to prepare yourself for every, every opportunity you get in the game. He said it. I can't speak for other closers, um, and I've been doing this for quite a while now. I mean, not as long as you know a lot of other people have. But the things that are going through my head is, you know, we're, we're a, a strong unit, and, and the unique thing about our ballpark is there's no bullpen where you know us guys have to go out there and fend for ourselves. We're in the dugout, so we're paying attention to the whole game. And a lot of the pitchers are a lot more smart because. We have to focus on the game. We know which situation we're going to come in. We know which guy we're going to face. We can tell whether or not the starter is going to go an extra inning. And we kind of pump each other up. Right around the seventh inning, I'm getting loose down on, underneath the cage. And I'm, I'm getting mentally prepared as much as I can. Uh, I'd be lying if I didn't say there were you know, some negative thoughts that go through my head. But when I walk out to the uh, bullpen, the only thought in my mind is, okay, the starter just did a great job. He probably went six, seven, eight strong innings. The guys ahead of me did their job. All I have to do is go out and get three outs. As simple as that sounds, it gets difficult. And then when I'm on the mound, wow, uh, there, there's a thousand thoughts going on per second. I mean, some, sometimes I don't even know where I am. I have to step back and just say, okay, you're on the mound pitching. Let's, let's just do this. Bochy's pacing. You've got a guy on first and second. No outs. It's time to step up your game. And then when we nail it down, we just go in the clubhouse, get a little wild, and then you prepare win. for the next game. There you go. Formula for success. A young lady to the right here has the microphone. Your name and where you're from. Hello. Um, my name is Maya. I'm from Fremont. And I have a question for all you guys. Like, what, What's your biggest inspiration? <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. Biggest inspiration, Tim Lincecum, you get to go first. Uh, you know, for me, I think it's, you know, getting to come to the field every day and getting the opportunity to go out on that field. It's like, it's, you know, it's not like it's given to us. It's, you know, we got to work for it. We know that we're, uh, you know, we're a special group of guys and a very small percentage of us that get to go out there and play professional baseball. So we take it, you know, for what it is. And, uh, you know, without, except for that, I think it's my dad. He's been, you know, there just pushing me from when I was a kid to, uh, 
know, making me let my make, ma ma let me make my own decisions as opposed to forcing me. So. Hey, Freddie, your biggest inspiration? You know, I think it's just playing for our families. You know, I mean, uh, you know, I have a wife and two boys now, and you know, they just inspire me every day to go out there and give everything I have. I mean, we play, we grind it out every day. That you know, we don't have. We don't have much in the tank some days, but uh, you know we give everything we do have, and, and you know I just want to make everyone proud. I go out there, and, and it might be a kid that uh, a kid or, or you know someone's first game watching me play. You know, and I was always my uh, college coach told me to, you know never disrespect the game. You know, so uh, if I every game if I go out there, and, you know if I don't have as much as I should, um, you know, I, I try to just push myself and give everything I have, and uh, that inspires me, just knowing that there's people watching me, and, and, and little kids, you know, and hopefully their parents are telling me, you know, we want you to play uh, the game like him one day, you know, and, or, or watch him play, he plays with a lot of heart and passion, so that inspires me, just the young kids, my family, and, and coming out here and doing the best I can do. All right, very well said, Brian, your biggest inspiration. I play this game for a million different reasons, but there's only three that I would like to mention and it's the only three that, that really matter to me. First, I play for my maker. I play for God. Yeah! Then, you know, like these guys, I play for my family. I play for my father. He's not here right now, but he's watching. And then uh, I play for all you guys. Yeah! You guys go through just the toughest season as we do. And, uh, you know, we appreciate everything you do. We wouldn't have, you know, a great ball club if we didn't have 50,000 raging fans wearing black and orange. I think we're going to go over to this side. We've got a young gentleman over here with a question. Uh, this is for Timmy. Uh, what would you rather have more? Two back-to-back -back Cy Youngs, which you already have. <laughs> or the World Series ring that you're going to be getting in April? Um, I think... Uh, I mean, it's, uh, Albert Pujols said it best. He's like, he's got all these accolades, these you know things that think people have never done, but there's one thing he hasn't done. That's a World Series, and that's what he says he wants to get the most. So when I heard him say that, you know, it, it changed my perspective on it, and obviously that's that's the one thing that matters the most is that World Series ring. There it is. Good question. for sponsoring the uh, Amici's Q&A stage. Amici's follow, you know Amici's. Check them out at Amici's.com. The East menu. Coast Pizzeria. They're very, very good. All right, who's next? On the right side of the room, we're going, oh, right, uh, who has the mic? Oh, oh yeah. <laughs> it's only appropriate. She One of the great the Giants fans of them all, SF Giants girl. Lauren, what's your question? Hi, I'm Lauren from San Francisco, and I have a question for all three of you. Um, what is your typical off-season workout schedule like, and how did it have to change since obviously your off-season was shortened a little? Good question again, Tim. Let's come in the one hole. What do you got? Um, you know, for me, I think it goes back to that terrible August that I went through and, and made you guys endure as well. But, uh... Man, that's kind of when I changed it up. I mean, I started uh, emphasizing on the legs a little bit more. Obviously, I don't have the biggest ones, but uh, I try to do the best I can with them. And, uh, you know, Dave Rickety says your legs get easier this season. And so hearing that from your pitching coach definitely makes you want to push harder at that. And, uh, yeah. And, Freddie, your off-season regimen and how it changed playing till November 1st. You know, for me, unfortunately, the last two years I've had surgeries and I've had to deal with injuries. And, uh, you know, it's tough. You can't get uh, prepared the way that I normally like to. You know, I usually, I'm, I'm going to a facility, whether it's athletes' performance um, in Arizona, or I'm always trying to be with around guys that are going to push me. And, uh, you know, I haven't been able to do that the last two years. So, um, you know, for me, it obviously is a short off season, rehab, 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 um, just like last year. But at least this year, I'm uh, way ahead of schedule. Um, and I've been lifting with the, I did a mini camp with the, uh, you know, with a lot of the minor league guys in Arizona. And, you know, a great bunch of kids. And, and just, you know, they push me. They kick my butt. You know, those young pups kick my butt. But uh, it's good. So um, that, that, that's the main thing for me is I've been rehabbing the last couple of years. But I'm probably now able to get stronger and get my strength back. All right. Right, Brian, and you're, uh, you've already mentioned a little bit that you had to start your workouts. Well, you can take it from there. Yeah, yeah, I start my workouts uh, around November 1st each year, and luckily for me, I, I got to do it just yeah. before Game 4 in Texas. <laughs> workout, workout hasn't changed at all. I have a, a regimen that I go through. Uh, it works. No, no, no. Um, you know, I try to be in the best possible shape that I can be. I was told when I was younger in, in Little League, you want to be a successful pitcher? Run. So that's what I've been doing. I've logged over 
700 miles this off season. Um, yeah, I know. I, I got a little crazy. But I feel that if I'm in the best possible shape, if I mentally drain myself, pitching will be easy. And if I come into spring training raring to go, my teammates will respect me and understand hard work does pay off. Side, I think Polly, what do you got over there? Okay, where is this one coming from? Oh, right here. Uh, my name is Isabel. I'm from Pleasant Hill, California. My question is for Brian Wilson. What were you thinking as you had to you know, strike out the, the last thing? Well, as you know, and always know, it's a 3 2 count, probably. <laughs> I said, this is what's going to happen, Brian. You're going to grip the cutter. Uh, regardless of what Buster calls, I think I think he knew what was coming. I'm going to make this the best possible pitch. I'm not going to try to make it nasty, but I'm going to stay within myself. But I got comfortable because I saw a section above home plate, way up at the top, thousands of Giants fans screaming, standing up in that bought, standing up in that ninth inning like they always do. I took a glance in the dugout, and there was no fear. You know, as, as long as I know that my team has my back, uh, regardless if I give up a homer in that situation, but that wasn't going to happen. I was thinking, San Francisco deserves this. They've worked their tail off. This final pitch is for all the legends of the game from San Francisco. They didn't have an opportunity to bring home a world championship, and, and as much pressure as that may seem, I just smiled through the pitch, knew what was going to happen and turned around and had just a bunch of guys aiming for me and we were just jumping around. Before we get to this side of the room, we have, I mean, this is, I saw the writers wrote about this yesterday, we have Fear the Beard, is it time to fear the tash? Tim Lentz and Bella. Do you have a name for it? Brian Wilson asked if he has a name for it. The machine! I don't know, what do you guys think I should name it? Get a suggestion box. That's not bad, Brian. We'll fear the fear foo, Brian said. Yes. Does that work? You guys like that? Fear the foo? Fear the foo. Fear the foo. <laughs> Maybe we'll take us uh, some opinions from you guys and then I'll name it from there. Okay. And if you guys, maybe you can hit him with Brian Wilson's Twitter account. Because uh, you don't have one, do you, Tim? We had to talk about it. It was the elephant in the room. Let's be honest. Right? Somebody had to address it. Yeah. Okay. Question. Your name and where you're from? 